Hey guys, this is an updated tutorial for my Milky Way Nebulosity workflow. The original, it did an okay job, but when you zoomed in a lot, there was noticeable quality loss and blotchiness, and it wasn't great. As I mentioned, it was kind of just my own personal uh, first attempt, so I really wanted to come back and do a much better uh, effect. So what I've learned in the past few weeks is you know, I'd been searching for nebulosity, but what it's actually called is star reduction. If you Google star reduction, you'll find tons of tutorials. So once I learned that, I was able to find a much better way to do this. And let's see, this is the second attempt with the new method. And you'll see there's a lot more detail there, but we still get a similar effect that I was originally going for. So we're gonna have a lot higher quality images. With that being said, let's get right into Photoshop and I'll show you how to do it. Here's my original photo. Pretty dark, pretty boring, not much going on. And I'm just gonna get us ready to go. The first thing we wanna do for this new star reduction technique is go up to select and choose color range. Once we choose color range, uh, we've got a couple different options here. Some people online recommend doing sampled colors and clicking on a star. I would just do highlights because all of our stars, of course, are highlights. And from there, we've got two sliders, fuzziness and range. I would recommend increasing the fuzziness first until you can see a lot of the stars and then messing with the range. What you don't want to do is go too high where it's selecting the entire photo, but just try and get it where it's selecting most of the bright stars. And you can always go back through this process multiple times and kind of fine tune it for your particular focal length and your particular image. So once it looks pretty good, I'm gonna hit OK. And all of a sudden the marching ants appear out of nowhere. And if we really zoom in here, you'll notice that all the stars have been selected very quickly, very easily, which is great. The next step is to go up to Select, Modify, Expand. And since I took this image at 100 millimeters, uh, if I do an expand by two pixel radius, that usually does a pretty good job. So we hit OK. Now we've got a nice selection around all of the pinpoints of light. This is going to depend, again, on your particular focal length, but essentially when you expand it, you just want to make sure that you're covering up all of the stars in the photo. And that's what we're doing here. Once we've gotten the expansion, we're going to go back to Select, Modify, and then finally we're going to do Feather. And what I normally do is just do half the amount of my previous edit. So I did two for the expand, so I'm going to do one for the feather. Half the value there. And the last thing to do is actually our star reduction. So I'm going to zoom into the Lagoon Nebula so I can make sure I'm not losing any important details. And then these marching ants are going to obscure what's actually going on. So if I hit Control or Command H, I can hide them. And then finally they'll go up to Filter, down to Other, and over to minimum. Once I click on minimum, a dialog box pops up. The very first thing you want to do is come down to this preserve. I think by default it's on squareness, change it to roundness since we are dealing with stars. And then we're going to just adjust this radius so that the bright stars tend to disappear, but we're not getting any weird effects. And you can see our by two pixels, it's already uh, way overdone. In this particular example, somewhere around 0 0.7, 0 0.8 works well. And I always like to zoom out again, look at some stars and some other areas of the image, go back to filter other minimum, just to make sure there's no other effects that I'm not noticing. If I go too far, it's just creating a, see these blue halos, that's from the chromatic aberration from the lens itself. Um, so again, for my particular image, somewhere between 0.5 and one pixel is good enough. I'll hit OK, and there we have our star reduction. And it might be kind of hard to see in the video, but this is really what I was going for, this kind of mysterious, nebulous quality to the Milky Way, which if I toggle this on and off, with the original image, there's just so much um, bright stars, it really takes away from the Milky Way itself. And once we've done this, I can do a curves layer. And what I really like to do is click on the little hand icon here, find a bright area in the Milky Way, one of these whiter areas, and then 
one thing I just forgot, and this is probably going to happen to you too, if I hold down the Alt key and click Alt key and click on my layer mask that I just created, it automatically selected all the stars. Remember how we hid them? Well, they never got deselected. So right now, if you hold down Control or Command D to deselect them, we know they're deselected. I'm just going to delete this layer mask and create a new one real quick. Now we're starting fresh and we don't have any weird selections. Again, I'll go back here, click on a nice bright area, bring it up, find a darker area in the Milky Way and bring that down, get some nice contrast, and then I can just add a few more tweaks to it. And I can even add another one just to do an overall bump. And here's our before and after. See just those stars, you don't even notice it when you originally take the photo, but they're just so intense. And just by doing the star reduction technique, it really allows the Milky Way to shine through beautifully. And when we zoom in, it's just a much higher quality uh, star reduction technique than the dust and scratches that I showed you originally. You can always toggle this layer so it's not as powerful just by lowering the opacity which in this case I might do, maybe put it down just a little bit. And there we go. Again, compare that to my original photo here where there was just no real detail uh, once the photo actually loads here. You see how splotchy that is. With all that being said, I'm still going to keep this original workflow from this photo attached to the end of this video right after I'm done talking. Uh, so you can still watch through it. There might be something you gained from it, but I wanted to just show you the updated uh, method that I've learned recently, just so we're all moving forward together on the same level here. As always, if you have any questions or any recommendations, feel free to leave a comment. And uh, thanks for watching. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be covering how to increase the nebulosity in your Milky Way photos. So you're going to be able to bring out a ton of detail in the Milky Way and really take your photos to the next level. Just to show you, this is the before image. You'll notice the Milky Way is there, but it's just kind of flat and one-dimensional. Also, you'll see that the foreground is blurred pretty heavily. That's because I used a star tracker, and that actually moves the camera around at the same speed as the stars. So instead of being able to only do a 20 or 30 second exposure, this one was actually about three minutes. Now, of course, the problem with that is you have to blend two exposures, the foreground and the stars, to get a final image. If you want to learn more about that, that will be my next tutorial on blending those. But uh, right now I do have a buying guide so you can kind of get familiar with star trackers themselves. Uh, that's over my website. I'll have a link in the description. And I do have another YouTube video where I look at the Ioptron Sky Tracker Pro, which is actually the star tracker that I use. Uh, here's another photo I took, and then I applied the luminosity effect to really make it stand out more. This was the photo before that. But easily, the, the best thing you can do for your Milky Way images, if you want to start taking better photos, is to use a star tracker. Uh, but today we're talking about nebulosity, so let's get into that. I'm going to use Adobe Bridge and open up my RAW file here. And the first thing to pay note to is the fact that the shutter speed was actually 60 seconds at 100 millimeters, which is pretty crazy. And that's why I was able to capture so much detail in the Lagoon Nebula and the Trifid Nebula there. And I really didn't have to do much editing at all here in Adobe Camera Raw. I did some minor white balance tweaks and increased the saturation a little bit, but that's really it. Once you have your image looking pretty good in Adobe Camera Raw, we're ready to open it up into Photoshop. All right, so my image is loaded into Photoshop. First thing I want to do is duplicate my background layer. And then I want to rename this to Nebulosity. Next, I want to go up to Filter, Noise, Dust and Scratches. And this is really the foundation of this whole process. And you'll see what we're actually doing is just removing the stars, um, which tend to take attention away from the actual Milky Way. In this case, I'm going to use about three pixels for the radius. 
depending on your scenario, you can go anywhere from about 2 pixels to 10 pixels. You just want to be careful that you don't go too high or else you're going to lose all the detail. You want to make sure you still have some nice detail there, but most of the stars disappear. So again, 3 pixels. And I wouldn't touch the threshold because it tends to create a halo around your stars that looks pretty ugly. Once we have a nice nebulosity layer where the stars have been eaten away, I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer. And from here, my main goal is just to increase the overall contrast in the image without blowing out any nice detail in the nebula. And you can do this any way that looks good for your particular image. I think that looks well, uh, pretty good there. So I'm going to merge this layer down by right clicking and hit merge down. And then I'm going to duplicate my nebulosity layer. There we go. And I'm going to name this to sharpen. Next I'll go up to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And my goal right now is to bring out even more detail in these dust clouds. So you can choose the amount I would say somewhere between 20 to 50 percent and then increase the radius uh, until it looks nice to your eye. Once that looks good hit OK and the reason that I create the sharpen layer is because normally it's just too strong so the easiest way is to just reduce the opacity and once it's just strong enough even that might be a bit intense I'm going to right click and merge my sharpen layer down again so now I just have that final nebulosity layer our next step is to add the stars back into the image so for that we want to duplicate the background layer again drag this on top of the nebulosity layer and then we want to change the blending mode to difference. Once we've done that, we want to hit Control or Command A to select the entire canvas, Control or Command C to copy that, and then we want to click on the nebulosity layer and then hit Control or Command V to paste that data in. If you've done that right, it should create a new layer, layer 1 in this case, and the image should go black. Once we have that, we want to right click or uh, click on this background copy and just delete it. We don't need it anymore. And now we're just left with this layer here that was essentially pasted in. I'm going to rename this stars. And then all we have to do is change the blending mode to either lighten or screen. I prefer to use lighten. And if we zoom in really close, you'll notice that brings back the stars that were eaten away. So we're bringing back some nice detail that was lost. And you can feel free to adjust the opacity. Uh, sometimes you want to just take a little bit of that brightness out. And then once you've done that, you can apply any finishing tweaks, whether that's adding some more vibrance or adding a, a levels adjustment layer, whatever you think looks uh, good for your particular image. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not, but I am kind of just winging this whole process. Uh, there really isn't much online in the way of a, a nebulosity tutorial like this. So if you have any feedback or critiques or maybe you know some even better techniques to use, feel free to leave a comment or shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, like I said, I'm just kind of making this up as I go, but I think the results are pretty spectacular. Um, with that being said, Again, this was a tracked image, so if you're looking to do really high quality Milky Way photos, now that you know how to do this nebulosity uh, effect on your photos, consider getting that star tracker so you can capture a lot more detail with a lot less noise. And then you won't have to worry about you know stacking 20 plus exposures and doing all that nonsense when you can just have one really high quality photo. Thanks for watching guys, and uh, as always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions on this. Uh, and I'll see you next time.